Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Enter the Flow Zone podcast. Man, it's great to be back. A lot of strange things are happening in terms of, well, not really strange. I mean, I'm just planning out a lot of different projects and things like this. I've got this bioenergetics course that I'm really looking into and, and I want to create to help people with, with inner child healing and also just a lot of interesting just random projects that are coming up here and there. And today we got an amazing podcast for you guys. Uh, if you're interested in the whole uh, semen retention idea, or at least the concept, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've come across it. This is the man to talk to. We have Nakula Das with us today. He's the general of the semen retention army, and he's the sex guru for the modern man. How are you doing today, brother? Yeah, man, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for the invite and uh, onto your podcast. And I appreciate all the work that you're doing and, you know, helping guys get into the flow. That's what it's all about. Absolutely, man. We're, we're all tapped in here, right in the flow zone. Uh, man, um, so tell me about this, this journey of yours. I mean, I really want to know your hero's journey. So if you could share that really with the audience, what got you into this semen retention journey and... And yeah, let's start there. I have a bunch of other questions I want to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So how I got into this was <clears throat> actually I was introduced to the concept of sex transmutation, not necessarily semen retention, but the idea of sex transmutation through Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And in his, uh, his book, The Laws of Success. So what a lot of people don't know is Think and Grow Rich. First of all, if you've never read Think and Grow Rich, you got to read Think and Grow Rich to change your life. But what a lot of people don't know is that Think and Grow Rich is a scaled down version of his original manuscript called Laws of Success. And so the Laws of Success is uh, the full manuscript of Think and Grow Rich, where the publishers originally, they, uh, they weren't going to publish the book. They thought it was too much. It was too out there. It was too crazy. And they needed like a good title. And he couldn't come up with a good title. So finally, they came up with Think and Grow Rich. And, you know, the, the, the rest is history. Well, years later, they published, they finally gave the full manuscript out called The Laws of Success, where he dives even deeper into the science of sex transmutation. But long story short is this. He basically says this. Unless a man is able to transmute his sexual energy, unless he's able to take those sexual urges that we all have, Every guy knows what I'm talking about. You could be dead tired. Two o'clock in the morning, I got to hit the bed. And then next thing you know, you get a message, you know, hey, come over or yeah, you know, boom, you're pulling an all nighter. You're driving two hours across town. You got all the energy in the world. And the reason this is, is because sex is our most basic motivator. So when we learn, so what he says is if you learn to take your most basic motivation and consciously use it and transmute it into a higher expression. So love, relationship, in his case, he was talking about accumulating wealth and riches or spiritual growth. It doesn't matter. The yogis and the mystics, they talk about it from a spiritual perspective. But the principle is this. If you learn to take your most basic motivator and transmute it into a higher expression, then you will attain success beyond status quo beyond just surviving, beyond just getting by. And you'll evolve as a man. You'll actually have higher intellectual fa uh, faculties. You'll have ability to attract, ability to manifest in a much deeper and more powerful way. So that was my first concept or introduction to the idea of it. And like most guys, I read through the chapter, was like, okay, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, you know, if I get horny and I put it into my, into my business, then, you know, I'm not wasting my time, you know, masturbating to porn or doing something ridiculous with my energy. So, but that was like a very high level understanding. So I never really paid much attention to it. Then as I continued down my own, own journey, my own spiritual journey, I got involved with the Hare Krishna community. I studied uh, uh, esoteric uh, Christianity. So teachings of Jesus that aren't found in the Bible that are found in the other books uh, right, that weren't included in the Bible, the Gnostics, I, which means the word Gnostic means knowledge, just like the word Veda means knowledge. So I started studying the Vedas, knowledge, books of knowledge, the Vedas, uh, Bhagavad Gita, 
Srimad Bhagavatam, right? These two uh, books, uh, uh, especially, uh, I got introduced to the Hare Krishna uh, 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 movement, um, many other movements, the self uh, self fellowship realization, uh, many many different movements. Then I got into the Taoist stuff, uh, learning from the Taoist tradition, Mantak Chia, sexual kung fu, sexual alchemy, and I just got fascinated with this idea of sex transmutation and there was a few basic principles that they all talk about and one of them is semen retention that that ultimately a man must learn to retain his semen and practice some regulation over his sexual life if he ever expects to either become a fully realized soul or to accumulate riches or to even just have a vital awesome healthy, uh, holistic uh, life. And so I started studying all of this stuff. I started hiring coaches and reading books and attending webinars and seminars and listening to, you know, gurus and teachers. And truthfully, there's not a lot of people. It's a small kind of niche community. And I was like, I'm going to take this mainstream. I'm going to bring this out to the world. And, uh, and that's my mission. My mission is to bring the practices and art of sexual alchemy semen retention and sexual knowledge to the world for all of mankind so that they can understand also how they're first of all we think we're a sexually open society and i would argue that we're a sexually repressed society in an illusion of openness that there's this there's this kind of illusion i'll also uh, i'll also put out the uh the 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 proposition that Essentially, there are very powerful people in this world who know this knowledge, who have studied this, who understand it, and they are using it against you. They're using it, especially if you're a man, they're using it to weaken you and to control you. Because a man who's sexually free cannot be controlled. He is his own thing. He is free, and he is going to carve his own path in this world. And uh, it's beneficial to the overall systems that we live in that men stay subdued. And so we could talk about it at different levels, but my overall mission is to uh, eliminate uh, sexual confusion, sexual repression, and reestablish healthy sexual expression on the planet. Incredible. That's an awesome mission, man. You're like, you're like a disruptor. You're like, the, you're the Morpheus in this game right now. That's, that's incredible, it's so man. funny, man. I just watched the series of the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, 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 just, just again, I love those movies, you know? So anyway, yeah. don't get me started on those movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. totally. And the new one's coming out too. I'm super excited oh, no, for I'm that. Excited yeah. For it. yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. That's, that's really incredible. And what you said about, you know, we live in the, a sexually repressed society under the illusion that we're sexually open. I think that's so true because we have this idea that, you know, oh, sex is taboo, but also sex is everywhere. And so it's this mixed messaging, right? It's this confusion. So, yes. yeah, I, I know for a lot of men, they experience a lot of, you know, shame around sexuality. What do you think, you know, um, mm. is basically the, the disadvantages of that shame? Like how deep can this thing go really, you know? Well, well, again, I said sex. So we have to understand how sex influences your basic psychology. Um, as a man, uh, if uh, our sexual prowess, let's say, is directly linked to our confidence. If a man knows he is a man, right? I'm not saying cocky. Like, I'm not saying like he's over the top or anything like this in cockiness, but he's confident. He knows he can perform well. He knows he's a great provider. He knows he's a great protector. He's strong body and mind. He's got his shit together, basically. Then he feels good in the world and he sends out all the signals of being a great provider and protector, which makes him attractive as a man. This is what guys in the no fat movement figured out. They figured out if they stop jerking off and they, they stop watching porn, then they attain a certain level of, 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 of self-mastery or self-control, which enhances their ability to get real sex as opposed to watching sex on a screen or, you know, kind of just uh, uh, masturbating and ejaculating that energy out. So the first thing we have to understand is that there's a huge link. Uh, uh, they're, both, they're interlinked. Your sexual energy and your psychology, your confidence, your self-esteem, your self-image, they're all interlinked. So once you can grasp, okay, those things are interlinked, then you, then you could say, well, what now let me put shame on that. Let me put shame into that equation. 
Well, now I've got in my most deepest motivation and my deepest psychology, I've got shame. Now, if you have shame, you're not going to be on task, on mission. You're not going to be as confident. You're going to hide more. You're going to hide your gifts. You're going to hide your talents. You're going to hide your purpose. And in that sense, you won't be as attractive. You also won't be as controlled. You're going to find different outlets to fulfill yourself, which are going to be negative and not positive, all because you've got this cloud of shame or this veil of shame over your perception. One of the first things I do when I'm working with guys, whether they're working with me inside the SEMA Retention Army or my powerhouse men's, uh, men's transformation, it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching training that I do for men, um, regardless of how you work with me, the, one of the first things I help guys do is pop that shame out of their system. And that can be done at the intellectual level through like coaching, mental exercises, affirmations, retraining the brain. But it can be done at the energetic level a lot easier and quicker through practices of breath work. So if you're familiar with pranayama, deep breath work, learning how to change the airflow and the energy in the body and learning how to reset your body through air, through breath and sound. And so by com combining breath and sound, then we can pop out some of these, uh, some of these energetic blocks like shame, like guilt, like regret. And what I tell most men, and this is, of course, like if we take the if we take a Christian perspective, uh, this is the teachings of forgiveness. Why Jesus taught forgiveness so much is because without forgiveness, first and foremost, forgiving ourselves for all the shit that we've done, for all the porn we've watched, for all the mistakes, for all. If we don't forgive ourselves first, then we carry all that guilt and that shame. And that's a dense energy. It's a low vibration. And that low vibration, then it's like, it's like trying to swim upstream, right? Life wants to take you to riches. Life wants to take, life wants to take you to your destiny, right? Like, like a seed wants to grow and become a, 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 a wonderful uh, you know, apple tree here in Canada, maybe a mango tree in India, you know, depending where you're at, right, in the world. The, the point is, is that the seed wants to, fulfill its destiny and produce its fruit and when it produces it fruit its fruit not only does it fulfill itself because it's done its job it's done its dharma its nature it's also naturally providing for everyone else all the soil gets nutrients from the apples or the mangoes that drop the the beings the creatures the living entities get to eat those mangoes and enjoy it and get to fill themselves up so you see that the seed has become a natural provider and protector. It provides a shade and shelter. We use that tree in so many ways. So similarly, you're no different than the tree. You know, there's not much difference between you and a tree. You need to fulfill your destiny so that you feel fulfilled and that you naturally provide protect for everybody around you and that those around you benefit. Everybody you come in contact, it should be beneficial. You should be adding to people's lives. But if you're holding all this shame, this regret, this neediness comes out. And this neediness means you're trying to take from other people, not provide or protect from them. You know, oh, fulfill me emotionally, fulfill my sex desire, fulfill me in this way. And because of that, you end up becoming a deficit to the universal body. You end up becoming like, oh, okay, we have to take care of this guy now. And because of that, we have to then, 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 then you no longer add to life. You, you live in deficit. So hence, you acquire debt. You acquire low energy. You, your material circumstances are always reflecting your inner world and who you are. And that's the, that's the thing to remember. So I'm sorry, I kind of went on a tangent there. Can you remind me of the questions to make sure I get that, that answer that question specifically? Yeah, I, I believe the question was um, around, um, what was the question? I don't even remember yeah, what the question was. was. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. I, well, anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was a really... Guilt shame. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was about shame, exactly. So I was asking basically about where, how deep does the, the shame go? That was the question. Yeah, so yeah. it's the roots. Shame, shame yeah. goes right to the roots. Mm -hmm. And look, if you don't like the fruit you're producing... Like if you taste a mango, you pick a mango off a tree or an apple or a banana mm -hmm. and the fruit is not very tasty or nice. The fruit is not the problem. The fruit is the result. The fruit is the, the, the problem is somewhere in the roots. 
Right. So similarly, if you're it's looking not getting at your health, the nourishment, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it hasn't been nourished properly. It doesn't have the nutrients. It didn't get right. the right protection. It didn't mm. get the right nutrients. It didn't get exposed to the sun. It didn't have the good soil. So similarly, if shame is in your soil, is in your root, then it's, it's infiltrating all aspects of your being generally at an unconscious level. Now, as a coach, as a trainer, it's my job to make you conscious of it so then you can then change it or transform it. And that's the beauty of the human body. The human body, we have the ability to work out all of this stuff that's in our energy. We, we have the ability to do that because we can become conscious. Mm, I, ha- I live with two cats, Vinny and Hunter. I can't tell Vinny and Hunter, hey, man, you got some things to work on. You know, you know, you got some stuff, right? They, they can only just do what nature allotted them to do. But as human beings, we can go, our nature is to go above and beyond the physical nature and transform ourselves, become something new. And, uh, and with shame, with guilt, with regret, and without the ability to forgive and let that energy go, uh, it stifles our growth. It stifles our, evo- uh, our evolution. And that's what sexual repression does. That's why, in my opinion, uh, you know, sex is placed everywhere in the world so that you desire it. But then they tell you it's taboo. Don't talk about it. Don't say anything about it. You know, our cultures are uh, sometimes are even our own religions. Right. They they suppress it. Not I'm not always saying this is a deviant way or this is meant like that. It's oftentimes just misinterpretations yeah. and, and, you know, not understanding it deep enough, you know, reading a Facebook meme and thinking that you've got depth of understanding, right? <laughs> Facebook right. is not depth of understanding, you know, like, you, so it's, it's, it's not being okay. You know, it's funny. I was, I'm, I'm listening to um, Marcus Aurelius meditations. If you know this, uh, uh, this book, you I love to stoicism, it man. Yeah. I love stoicism. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so um, one of the things that Marcus Aurelius says is that uh, we have to um, uh, not to be satisfied with a superficial understanding of a book or so we could change it to just subject, right? Don't be satisfied with, oh, I read it on Facebook. I, uh, I saw a couple memes. Now I understand. No, that's superficial understanding. So what's happened is that most people superficially understand their sex. I do. I have sex. I understand it. Right. Uh, you know, I've watched porn. I get it. You know, right. It's like, that's a superficial understanding. This guys who really want to understand, they go deeper into the subject and they really recognize how it's working. And then they recognize that they have to do some real work if they want to transmute that energy and actually learn to use it. Because our modern society, unfortunately, has done a terrible job of training anyone. Basically, the porn companies have been left to educate the world on sex. And that is not a good, it's not a good place. It's not a good scene, you know? Right. Yeah. So what would you say is the difference between like no fab and, and semen retention in a sense? Okay. So no fab really focuses on the uh, stop. Uh, no fab is really about stop watching porn and stop masturbating. Right. Uh, uh, that's the main message from no fap. Uh, semen retention is learn to control your sexual energy. Yes. Don't watch porn. Right. Masturbation should be done intentionally to as a practice of cultivating energy as opposed to needing to get off. So it's a very different mood. It's a very different consciousness. It's not about masturbating. It's about uh, uh, conscious evolution. And eventually with semen retention, the need to masturbate goes away because you become very powerful in your sexual energy. Semen retention is about circulating sexual energy. Tantra, learning to connect intimacy, vulnerability, and holding a strong masculine frame. What happens is if you practice no fap without a sexual alchemy practice, without learning to transmute it into spiritual force, then you, yes, you get the physical benefits. You become more masculine as a man, more testosterone. You become more horny and you chase more women. But in semen retention and sexual alchemy, which is what I teach, 
that all happens. Plus, you learn to transform your raw semen into ojas. Ojas means aura, right? Uh, it's a Sanskrit word. Um, and so ojas means your aura or your spiritual, your energy power, right? Your energy body. So think of water that gets boiled up and refined into a gas. And that gas naturally begins to flow upwards. Right? If I boil water, once it's refined into a gas, it flows upwards. Well, if I was to take that, if, if I was to take that gas and harness it, that is energy. It's pure energy. It's raw fuel that I could then harness into a machine to move something. So your body goes through the same process that that water does. Once you retain your semen for 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, your body is always producing semen. According to Ayurveda, it takes anywhere from 40 to 60 ounces of blood to make one drop of semen. So there's a tremendous amount of energy and production going into making your semen. Once you have an excess of semen, you've got more than you need. Now you're abundant, right? This is the first key to abundance. You have to become abundant energy. I've got more energy than I even need. Now I can be of service to people. Right. So the cup and, overflow it. <laughs> right. Right. Now yeah. the cup over. Now my cup is overflowing. Now I yeah. now I can I have more. I can give you. I can give you. Yeah. I can give you because I've got yeah. more than I need. Now I'm yeah. in abundance. So the first thing is you have to become energetically abundant to then actually experience, you know, if you want material abundance or wealth or a bit success in your business, whatever it is. You know, if you're an athlete and you want to be the best, if you're uh, 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 an artist and you want to give the best art, the first task for any man, any human, uh, but I work with men mainly, right, is to overflow, is get your cup to overflow. And so semen retention, and it doesn't mean you can never ejaculate. Like some guys, like I'm not, I'm not preaching being a monk. If you want to be a monk, I, I know monks. My Guru Maharaj is a monk, all right? So I'll introduce you to him. I'll introduce you to the monks that I know. I'm not a monk. <laughs> I'm not a saint. I'm not a holy man. I'm not a monk. I'm simply a man trying to live his best life, right? And for me, that includes sexuality, but not only sexuality. It, it, the key is not to be overtaken by it, not to have it occupy every ounce of your mind or be addicted to it or have exactly watching porn all day long that's not sex that's not sexuality yeah. that's you just that's mental that's, concoction yeah yeah it's like there, there's a difference between like friction with your hand rather than that like self-pleasure right that there's a oh there's yeah. a vast difference and i think that a lot of people yeah whatever we resist will persist so they feel like oh i can't like, i got it not not you know and they push yeah. against it and then they end up, you know, ejaculating or whatever. And, and also I've heard a lot in the community about flatline. I remember I went like 200 days or something on, on semen retention once. That was like my big uh, achievement award, like level up in the video game. Amazing, right? amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I experienced that flatline and I had different ways that I was, you know, like primal screaming and like, you know, cold yeah. showers and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what are some ways that, you know, you, you, take your clients through that phase. Like, let's say they're like, they're freaking out. They get on a call with you, man, I'm flatlining. Well, what do you tell them? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm like, I'm like, you have to remember that nothing in life is, is like when you, when a guy, nothing in life is always going to give you the constant high, right? Like that's what guys get addicted to is that constant high. Right. So when yeah. you, like, I like remember when bliss I first junkies, started practicing, yeah. Totally, bliss junkies, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 But right. It's like, when I, um, when I first started practicing semen retention, I remember I retained for like the first time in like years since I was a teenager, essentially, I went like, you know, 14 days and felt that like, right, like that. And I couldn't even sleep. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I can't do this. I can't sleep. I'm so horny. I'm like, geez, I can't get like, I can't, what am I going to do with this? And then of course, you know, I ended up ejaculating stuff and that's just part of the game, right? But then I went like my first 90 days, I did that. And I remember experiencing like a flat line, right? 
But then what I recognize, it's not a flat line. And this is why mentorship is so important in the journey. Cause I, I had a coach, he was guiding me through this. Right. And he said, look, okay. When you fill up a cup, right. It's all exciting. Cause your cup is full, but then eventually your cup expands. So eventually you like, okay, like, uh, let me use a better analogy than a cup. You go to the gym. First time you go to the gym, you know, you're like, all right, I pick up my 10 pounds and I'm doing my curls or my 20 pounds or whatever. And you're thinking, man, that hurts, but I feel good. I'm, but, but then you do it for some time. Eventually that 10 pounds is nothing, right? You're like, it's not giving me that same um, exertion. Right? Mm. It takes less. So, is it like so a tolerance or are you saying it's like yes, a tolerance? A tolerance. You're tolerant. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So similarly, when guys say they're, oh, I've been, I've been retaining for, let's say 90 days or 200 days, but I'm flatlining. I'm like you're not flatlining. You're just tolerant of the energy. You're just more tall. It's like, it's like, it's like a, a guy who, who can lift a hundred pounds is going and saying, well, well, 50 pounds isn't doing it. Well, obviously you just, you can lift a hundred pounds, right? So what happens with guys is that their body adjusts to hold that energy, but it's now unconscious again, right? It's just normal. I operate at a higher level of energy than most men. I don't say that to brag. That's the reality, right? But in my experience, sometimes I'm like, man, I'm lacking energy. And then I meet other guys. And I'm like, oh, I ain't like, I'm not lacking energy. I'm not lacking energy. I'm just lacking energy because where I'm at in my journey, just like if I probably went to my Guru Maharaj, he'd be like, man, like you need to step it up. Right. So, so, right. It's like, it's the same thing, right? It's like, you've reached a level where your body is now used to it. And so what you're looking for though, is that high. But it's not that you flatline. It's just that you're used to it. Good. That's where you need to be. Now, the beauty is, is that once you have an excess of energy, excessive semen, right? Like inside the semen retention army, I help all guys work up to at minimum one. Ejac so you get one ejaculation per month. We regulate ejaculation to once per month. Now, when guys first start, maybe they're every once a week, depending where they're starting, you have to not compare yourself but just gradually improve. If you need to compare, compare yourself to yesterday, but never to anyone else. Take inspiration. Oh, wow, that guy's doing awesome. I can also do it, but never compare. And then why once, why once a month? It's because actually there are calculations. I love the Taoists because the Taoists went out of all traditions that I've studied so far. Um, I would say the Vedas have the best spiritual knowledge about attaining God realization and attaining God, like understanding what is God, who is God, how to attain God, right? I, I, I haven't read anything more than that. I find that Christianity has the best expression of how to use God in a material way. And I mean, how to live a, a, a healthy life, like how to be like, how to like, like Jesus really taught the principles of law of attraction and such. He didn't call it that, right? Different time, different place, different circumstances. But he showed the path to God and, and to show the path to, to, to uh, almost using that power to, to uh, acquire, acquire. And of course, you have to take context. Jesus was preaching to a suppressed nation, right? The Romans were suppressing the Jews, and he was helping the Jews overcome that suppression. So he taught principles of growth so that you didn't, that you couldn't be oppressed. He right. taught you how to union, to be a son of God and to use God consciousness to get out of oppression and supply and be, and open up the universal supply chain, which at the time the Romans were suppressing. So you have to take context of the preaching. Why? It's not that Jesus didn't know the Vedas. It's that he was time circumstance. He was helping his people, his community, get away from the oppression of the Roman Empire. In the Vedas, they, that oppression didn't exist at that time. The Brahmins, the, the, the yogis, the mystics, they, were all, they weren't being oppressed by the, the royal family. So if we look at the Mahabharat and we look at the Pandavas, right? And we look at uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the line of Maharaj Bharat, right? Bharat was the world. There was no, right? Bharat wasn't just India. 
Barat was all of Turkey, what's now modern day Turkey. And it, all of that was the world. And there was one king, right? Barat. And so that oppression wasn't there. So the teachings of the Vedas were at a higher level because the people already understood God. They understood attraction. They understood how to do these things. Now what they needed was moksha, liberation, and bhakti. They needed, how do I return to the spiritual plane and platform? Right? So you have to always consider any teaching that you're reading, what is the time, place, and circumstance of that teaching, and why was it being delivered in that way? So I found that Christianity has really focused on that aspect. The Vedas, I find, really focus on moksha, liberation in the spiritual world, right? And then I found, I found that the, the Taoists, who are like impersonalists, so they're starting to delve a little bit into like atheism a bit, right? Like into like, there's not necessarily a God, but everything's just energy. They really studied the energy flow of things, the yin and the yang. And so their understanding of the energy, I find absolutely tremendous and the most in depth. And they really dove into the sexual alchemy parts of it, right? Like how does sex as an energy influence? And so they created calculations to show us that if a man ejaculates once a month, he still has an excess. Like if I ejaculate once a month, even now with where I'm at, even if I ejaculate a couple of times, I don't feel that energetic dip. But if I was to ejaculate constantly, then I would, of course, right? So we use those calculations. That's how we came up with the once per month. It's because once per month ensures that a man is living in excess of semen. So his cup is overflowing, but he's not fully denying himself that bodily pleasure. So he doesn't feel the frustration unless he's willing to be a monk, unless he's willing to go into like, you know, to the aesthetic part of it is he's willing to be a sannyas and renounce then, then there's no point of denying yourself that because it then just becomes a frustrating process. So it's finding that balance with the Taoists as well is they, I find that they have a very balanced approach where again, they're not extreme kind of like the Buddha the Buddha said, and same with Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita says, if you eat too little or eat too much, you can't practice yoga. If you sleep too much, if you sleep too little. See, they're, they're talking about this balance, right? Like, they're, right, he, like Krishna is giving this example of balance. Um, Lord Buddha said the same thing. Lord Buddha said, uh, find the middle path, right? He tried all the extreme aestheticism. Right. He did all of that. You know, we know the, uh, you know, the guys, uh, the yogis who held their hand up or, you know, we right. These guys like the, the very extreme aestheticism, eating one grain of rice a day, like these type of things. The Buddha did all that. And he said, while there's advancement, there's Siddhi, mystical, Siddhi's mystical power, power of influence, power of a child. There's all these powers you can tap into. Right. Um, he says, while you can attain those liberation isn't there and happiness joy isn't there nirvana bliss isn't there bliss is found in the middle path so the buddha ate but he didn't overeat right he he, he took what was sufficient yeah that's it's what like we're that, talking about here it's that sweet spot man it's like yeah, yeah. No, that's that's the it's way the i flow. think of, it's the flow state exactly man <laughs> like, when that's you're in exactly that flow it. state yeah when you're in that flow state you naturally Take what you need and nothing more. Like I generally eat, sometimes people ask me, what's your diet like? Or says, I generally eat one meal per day with a protein shake. That's it, right? Wasn't I'm always like same. that. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't always like that. Uh, you know, and I don't say that to be like, ooh, look at me. I say that it's because my body doesn't need more than that. And I can tell now. If I overeat, naturally, I want to ejaculate. If I over, if I indulge in anything, if I indulge in anything too much, I get out of balance. My mind gets all wonky. I'm not as good in my business. I'm not as good in my life. I'm not as good in my relationships. I'm, you know, my workouts suffer. Right. Everything suffers a bit. Yeah. So what is that? I, like that excess, what if that excess was like uh, a reminder for us to be more conscious and actually go towards the middle path? What if it was like a signpost? You know what I mean? Like, that yeah. guides us, like shows us our limit. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. It's like a pendulum, right? Like, and the pendulum doesn't care whether it's negative or positive. It just needs any moment, any momentum on either side to swing. Right. 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 So that, that's why the middle path is there or it's transcendental, right? It transcends the duality, negative, positive, good, bad, right, and wrong. Those all, that's morality. I'm not talking about morality. I'm talking about an energetic state of flow of creation, right? It's like, and then you'll be guided from within on what that balance is. You'll naturally be like, no, I notice when I do that, I, I'm not on. And then, like you said, it's just a signpost. Get back there. Oh, then I go all the way to here. Get back there. Get back. Right. And then you find that middle path. And you'll notice, too, as men, that as we get older, naturally, um, our testosterone will decrease naturally. Now, of course, if we're fit, if we're healthy, if we're practicing semen retention, if we're eating well naturally, then your testosterone will still stay at high levels. Right. So you don't have to accept like some guys are like, you know, I work with a lot of older guys. They're like, I'm old. I was like, don't give me that shit. I'm old. You're unhealthy. <laughs> right. I was like, there's a big difference. You know what I mean? Cause I know some guys in their sixties that will run circles around 20 year olds. Right. And it's like, it's not your age, it's your health. And as men, we should be becoming more attractive and more grounded and more solid as we get older. That's the natural evolution of a man, right? Um, so as we get older, we'll easily find that balance. But how we treat ourselves in our younger ages is important. Um, when you're in your tw late 20s, 30s, 40s, those years will define you as a man for your 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. If you, in your late 20s, I mean, the earlier you start, the better. But even in your 40s, like I work with a lot of guys in their 40s, like late 30s, 40s generally, right? I work with guys of all ages, but the bulk of the guys I'm working with are in that age group. They've matured enough to recognize I have to get my shit together, <laughs> right? I can't be like doing this little kid stuff, smoking weed all day, jerking off all day, doing... Yeah, you know, in our 20s, we're kind of like, you know, it's right, you know, but but there's a time where we should mature enough to be like, yeah, I don't know, man, I didn't really picture myself like this in my 30s, right? Like, is this what I pictured myself to be? Well, who you are today and the actions that you and the habits and mindset that you cultivate right now is going to determine what five years from now looks like for you. And if you can always remember the long-term impact of your actions today, it'll help, help you keep stay on track. You know, one, right. simple, one simple meditation that you can use or mental exercise that you can use, any guy can use throughout the day is, will my future self thank me for this action or regret it? If I go on watch and jerk off right now, will my future self be like, man, good job on that. You, that was really good decisions you made back then. Or will five years from now, you'd be like, why didn't I stop? If, you're, if, you, if you don't feel like working out right now, or you don't feel like making those extra sales calls, or you don't feel like putting out that content in your business or <coughs> putting in the work at your job or your studies or whatever, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's the way you do it. If you do everything with care, with intention, then your life will constantly grow and improve. Right. It's like that mindset of like purpose over pleasure. Right. And that, 100% like that delayed gratification for sure. Like I, I do see that. Um, we're running out of time, but I have so many questions to ask you, man. Like I think we can yeah, extend yeah. it a little bit. So uh, sure, basically... Yeah, yeah. Um, my next question is about manifestation. So how exactly does manifestation relate to semen retention? Cause I've noticed my, like when I'm on that process, I am manifesting faster, but how exactly does that work? Yeah. Great question. So the, it, it, okay. So semen retention, when you hold semen within the body, the body after about seven to 10 days, reabsorbs that semen that's why the guys feel that height that rush like ah oh, 
what what it's doing is that it's recirculating your energy and it's also stimulating your testosterone testosterone is what makes us men on a physical level right the more testosterone we have the more muscle growth the more solid mind the more sex drive more motivation and more masculine qualities both physically and mentally that we attain so as we increase as you increase your testosterone production then your vibration increases, your energy increases. Remember, as as your what did you say? As your cup overfloweth, right? This is the teaching, right? As so, you start to overflow masculine energy, and masculine energy is positive, creative energy. So, because you have more energy and you're vibrating, literally, your body is vibrating at a higher level or frequency, then you're tuned in to higher frequencies. When you think a thought it penetrates into the material atmosphere uh, at a, like, like a sharp knife can cut easier than a dull knife. So everybody's using law of attraction, even the guy who's jerking off 24 seven, but his doll, his knife is so dull that when he's like, I want more money, he doesn't have the vibration or energy to then back it. Right. It's like a weak signal. It's like, if it's like the radio, but the radio's muffled. Yeah, as that's you a great analogy. Heal yeah. Yourself, yeah, as you heal yourself, you're not, you're, you're expressing your sexuality naturally. You're eating natural foods. You're exercising. You're healthy. You're, you're high testosterone because naturally that's how you're meant to be. Then when you take action or you think of something, then your antenna is not muffled your antenna is clear or pure. The Veda says you have to purify your body. Most people equate pure to morality. I'm a good person, a bad person. And there is an element of that for sure. But more important than thinking morality is am I actually pure? Like I'm drinking water right now. Well, this is pure, meaning this is, there's nothing negative in this energy. When I drink this water, it's not, it's not harming me. It's not dulling my antenna, my body. Now, let's say this was like a Coca-Cola. That is toxic. That's going to dull my antenna because it's acidic and it's going to make me as acidic. And therefore, my body, instead of using its energy to manifest money and relationships and experience, it now has to go, wait, we have to put that aside because we have to heal ourselves. Right. From so now a, your energy. From, I'm just going to make a pun from a city yeah. to a city. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah I love that. From a city to a city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, Genghis Khan, right? He was a big, big uh, uh, ruler, right? You know, probably conquered more land yeah. than any other man in history. For sure. You know what he said? He said, if any man can stay away from the drink, alcohol, right? And that, you know, because that's what, again, take his time, place, circumstance, right? That was his, you know, the poison of the day was uh, of his environment was alcohol. I would say the poison of, of my um, uh, upbringing here is weed. I would say a lot of people smoke, weed, including myself, right? I struggle with weed for years, right? I had to clean myself up from that. So there's all, whatever your poison is. Now I would say the poison of the day is porn. And actually we have so many poisons now that poison has become normalized in our society right it's Very nothing true. for a guy to smoke a joint have a drink watch some porn have some caffeine argue mm -hmm. with his all wife, in one go day. on social like and that's <laughs> his whole day is poison that's a single day <laughs> yeah. yeah that's just what that's right so take that times a year take that times five years no wonder you're full of anxiety depressed overweight no motivation because your body is literally trying to save itself it's like oh my gosh so there's no higher aspirations. There's no wealth there. There's no uh, right. dynamic sexual experiences and attraction. There's no healthy relationship and expression. And, and you got to know that this universe is so wonderful and blessing that it matches you perfectly. It will give you what you want, but you have to first and foremost do your dharma, your duty, your nature, which is to be a solid man. And so purification needs to happen. So 
everything, what I teach guys to do is to think like a sexual alchemist. So how does a sexual alchemist think? In terms of energy, that's it. I only think in terms of energy. And there's three types of energy, a positive energy, a neutral energy, and a negative energy, right? If I indulge only in positive energies, I have a positive life, positive results. I overflow and I am doing everything. Neutral energies, like let's say popcorn might be neutral. If I eat popcorn, I'll notice that it doesn't do anything for me, but it doesn't really take away for anything. So I always tell guys, if you need to have munchies, popcorn is your best bet. Okay, it's neutral. And then there's negative energies. Negative energies are often disguised as pleasurable at the beginning, but are poisonous in reality. Weed, alcohol, porn. Now, are most men, now in this world, we're going to interact with all three. There's no getting away from it. If you just step outside, someone will say something negative. Someone will like, just like, so you don't have to be like afraid of negative energy. Just know what to do with it. Oh, this is negative. I need to absolutely balance it out with positive. If I'm 90% positive, 5% neutral, and 5% negative, I won't even notice the negative energy. You know, the one, the, the, the sip of wine or the one drink of, uh, of wine uh, because the occasion called for it. It was a wedding and everybody was, you know, uh, my wife is Jewish, so it's muzzle tough and it's a drink, right? Or, or you know, uh, uh, an Italian family who has a, a, a small glass of wine to enhance the flavors of the pasta. And this is, if this is done in its correct form, it's still negative, I would suggest, right? But 90% of the day is positive. You're not, you're barely even going to feel this. But if it's, three glasses of wine, a coffee and a joint and porn, and then social media all day long, and then music and entertainment that only, that only talks about sex, money and hoes, you know, type, like, right, this type of thing. I, I grew up on hip hop, so, right, it's like, my, right, you know. Same then, here, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, that's what's in your mind, That was right? the programming, yeah, for that sure. That was the programming, right? Yeah. You know, it's all about money, bitches, and, and fighting, right? Like, you know, and so it's like, if that's the programming, then that's all negative. So what we got to do is slowly, it doesn't have to be slow, but generally it's slower than most guys want, but quicker than what they, there's that saying, uh, never, uh, never, never, uh, oh, guys often overestimate what they'll create in a year, but underestimate what they'll create in five years. Right. Because the first year of doing anything is the toughest. You're putting in all kinds of effort, but there's not a huge return in your mind. But that's just because you have to first purify yourself. You have to like your body literally has to shake off all those uh, those impressions and all of that toxins. And that takes time. If you spent the last five years masturbating, smoking weed and drinking alcohol all the time, well, what do you think? Because you practice two weeks of semen retention. Now, all of a sudden, women are going to be flocking to you. And uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't happen like that. It's a, it's a lifestyle that you have to develop. It's not a, a, a moment in time that says, I've achieved it. Yeah, man. It's a and lifestyle that you're constantly working on and getting better. And that's your purpose. That's what he said. When you, when you realize, like if some guys go, I don't know what my purpose is. I'll tell you what your purpose is. Evolve. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't have to, if you're like, oh, like, oh, Nakula, you're so clear. You're like, oh, I'm bringing semen retention and sexual alchemy to people all over the world. That's a result of years of not knowing what the hell I'm going to do with myself, but trying to figure it out. That is a, that clarity is a result of purifying my body meditations. yeah it's also it, that's true man and it's also like the the environment that you're into that that's yes. promulgating all these ideas right i, I said that's this right. yeah like two weeks ago i was like uh your habits has where your habits are at <laughs> you know what I mean? yes. like, and so but like the thing about lifestyle is so key man because i you know in the flow state of course it is a temporary state you know and a lot of people get they, they get caught into chasing this temporary state instead of looking at it like there's this lifestyle element of it, how can we maintain, you know, this, this ultradian rhythm of our day and be able to actually ride the wave of that and, and make, 
it into a lifestyle, man, make it into like a, a way of living through it, like being these walking embodiments uh, of the Tantra, of all of this, uh, you know, of this stuff, these ancient wisdoms. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, think about think about the whole cosmos is is weaving itself. It's like it's like like everything it's a spiral, is spiral. Yeah, yeah. It's a spiral, right? Everything is doing this, and so you have to align with that in an in an evolutionary way, right? Like, so for instance, this year might look like next year, but it should be at a higher level. You should be flowing up that funnel. Mm, man this is so down. powerful because my my tribe is called the upward spiral gang <laughs> so, oh, well, because it's, it's perfect that's, it's yeah, perfect that's man. perfect yeah yeah because yeah. that's what you should be doing so it's not about attaining a result like like I, I had this one guy reach out to me on instagram he's like oh i i've been masturbating blah blah how do i get my energy back right away and i sent him back a voice message saying Hey man, I appreciate the question. However, if you want like a quick pill, right? I'm I'm not your guy. But if you want to actually transform your life, which means develop habits and a lifestyle that's supportive to your growth, then I'm your guy. Then I'm willing to help you because I'm not looking for a quick fix because that's the porn mentality, a quick fix. Why not get a wife? Why not get why not practice these tantric practices why not do these things that at first aren't as sexy as a threesome online right you know what i mean but they're what you need to do so that you could become the man that that maybe you might have a threesome one day or but by the time you're that man that can have a threesome here's the funniest part about it it's so funny by the time you're that man that's like yeah i could do it you may or may not even want it i'll leave that up to you but you may notice that that same drive that drives you at the beginning as you really get into it changes. For me, what drives me is my evolution, my growth, and my connection to God. Yes, I'm not a saint. I'm not like, I like the worldly pleasures as well. So I'm very open about that because I don't want to give people some false impression. Like I'm just sitting there meditating all lot. No, I've got a wife. We're very active in the bedroom. We're this, but I practice regulation over it. It's semen retention, it's Tantra, it's, uh, it's 90%, you know, on focus, on point, on mission. And then I allow, you know, whether you call it God, universe, how, whatever language floats your boat, I yeah. allow God to reciprocate in his time, in his way. And so far, he has not left me disappointed both in and outside the bedroom. So I'm not, so I'm, so I'm not complaining. I, it's all about, like you said, it's all about that flow state, that upward spiral. And that's not something you do once a spiral is always moving. You are energy. You are always in motion. Even when you're sleeping, your mind is going, you're dreaming. There's energy. Energy is what makes things move. You're always in motion. So the question is, are you headed towards, are you headed on an upward spiral, an upward swing? or a downward swing? Are you headed towards enlightenment, pleasure, spirituality, self-actualization, or are you headed to the animal consciousness uh, of, of surviving, just surviving, death, destruction, pain, suffering? Right. And, and if that is true, that the energy is everywhere, right? That, that, it is actually moving constantly. That means that stuckness is an illusion. It's self-created. Oh, one hundred percent. Because atoms are that. constantly, yeah, moving. And and if you're just, moving. yeah, and if you're if you're in that stillness, that this is what I see sometimes is like really high vibrational people. They can hold that stillness, but they're also moving very fast. It's like frames per second in a movie. Yes. Right. And yes. that's the difference. That's right. The thing is, it gives the illusion of stillness. Stillness is just a word. It's not an actuality. It's right. just a, it's a word to get you to, to think, how can I make my inner world as clear or still as possible? But even that is work because you have to hold your energies. Like if I'm going to stillness, I still have to hold my mind. There's a work. I'm not actually still it just gives an illusion of stillness, right? Everything yeah. out here in this material world or this outer world, we can say, is illusory. 
It's an mm. illusion. It's a reflection or a manifestation, however you want to, whatever language you want to use to like grasp this idea that whatever you're seeing is an energy that's in motion, but you're seeing, a, like you said, the frames. Your frames are just making it on a solid item, but it's not actually solid. Nothing right. is solid. Nothing is still. Everything is in motion. That means the creator or the creation process of our universe is always alive. Life is movement. So if you're sitting Man. there all day watching <laughs> I, porn, watching this, and you're not moving, what is disease? Disease. And right. how does disease accumulate? Sedentary lifestyle. If Start you this. just walked every day, if, if you're like, I can't do nothing but walk every day, if that's where you're at, if you're like, man, mm -hmm. I got no motivation, I can't even get up. I've been in those spots. So I want you to know, like, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. Here's how I got out of it. Walking. Walking, I would say, saved me. Uh, my yeah. Guru Maharaj is known as the walking monk. Oh, nice. That's yeah, excellent. That's right? Yeah. So man. that's, and that's, I took inspiration from him. I think so he walks would, every day. Would somebody need to have a, a movement practice? This was my belief when I started because, you know, of course the, the sexual energy needs somewhere to go, right? It can't just be stagnant in, in the base. It's going to have that lower basal energy, right? Of like that stuckness. So in order for it to flow throughout the higher chakras and things like this, you need to move it, right? You need to move the That's body right. around. And so, um, would someone beginning the semen retention process, what kind of a movement practice would, would be beneficial for them? I know you said breath work would be helpful for that. Yeah. So the, there's different movements and different traditions have different ways. Specifically, right. what I teach is a combination of breath work to move that life force, the air in the body and learn how to train the air to be your natural energy source. That's the first one. The second is Qigong. So Qigong is just call it moving meditation. So making the hands flow up mindfully, down mindfully, like certain actions and postures. Yoga is good for this, but I find Qigong uh, to be a little bit better, but yoga can also do this. Um, and then meditation. And meditation, most people don't understand meditation because they think, again, it's like, well, They'll be like, Nikula, I can't, I can't meditate. My mind is always going. I'm like, good. It means you're alive. I want to, I, I want my little, I want my mind to, to, to not talk to me. I said, well, just death. Don't worry. You don't have to train for that process. You just wait long enough and eventually death will come and your mind will go away. I said, I said so <laughs> I no like training that. needed for that. Yeah. You just, <laughs> right. be, all you need is patience and, and the mind will eventually go away. I said, it's not that you want your mind to be still. It's that if your mind put you in a good, joyous state, and if you learn to use your mind in the way that it was designed, you would never ask for a, st a quiet mind. You would, because your mind is producing joy. It's producing happiness, connection, wealth, well, all the things. If you know how to use your mind to get the things you want, your mind in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, your mind is either your best friend or worst enemy. True. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, as in the book of Proverbs in the Bible, it says, as a man thinketh, so he becomes. Yeah, Einstein right? said, you know, is a friendly universe or a hostile universe? It's like a different wordings for, for the same kind of process. And you're right. It is a process, right? Like Julia Cameron calls God, the, the acronym, good orderly direction. So it is that right. like that upward spiral, you know, process. And, and I think, yeah, once people are tapping into that, and so that super consciousness, right? That, yes. that ability to, to tap into that cosmic divine nature. I think there is something that, that happens where, where you become like a conduit for the source energy. You just let the process happen. And it's no more like this forcing or like trying to make it happen. It's like it happens because you're tapped in, you know? Yeah, that's right. You're tapped in. Uh, the, the Taoist or uh, Lao Tzu. Um, yeah. Uh, he wrote, um, I forget the name of, uh, of his teachings. Dao Te Ching, um, yeah. Dao, Dao Te Ching, Ching, thank you. The Dao yeah. Te Ching, thank you. Uh, he says, Lao Tzu says, uh, they, they call it, what the Taoists call it, uh, what's the, uh, Wu Wei, Wu Wei, that's the word I'm looking Wu for. Wu Wei, yeah, yeah. Wu Wei, effortless action. Effort. Effortless action, and effortless effort, yeah. 
Here's what you'll notice about all successful men and women is that they have effortless action. They're never in a rush, but they're never stagnant. They're never in, they're never like, oh, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. You know what I mean? Type of thing. No, they're just caught. They're in process. They're in the process of creating. So they're just moving, moving, moving towards their outcomes. They're experiencing their outcomes, but then they're moving on. They're also yeah. not attached, right? And, and in the like- flow state, you know, in the flow state science, it actually shows that it's like the exertion is like seven out of 10, like in terms of the flow state. So it goes with the yes. Uwe philosophy. That's why I love yes. Taoism as well, man. Like, it's Yeah, powerful. it's not overexertion. Like I, yeah. I, I can do that in my own journey. I've learned like I'll overexert, mm. but that is a sign of scarcity. Yeah, I don't trust out. what I'm doing is enough. I don't trust it's going to work. I feel mm-hmm. like I have to put in more effort than I need to. No, no, no. You weren't designed to put in the right amount of effort to get the right amount of result. Like it's I was all actually being in tune as yeah. opposed to overexerting and definitely underexerting is not going to get you anywhere, right? That's just going to yeah. nature. Nature is going to reward those who align with nature. I was actually doing a a Tai Chi class a while back and they were Mm. saying that, you know, uh, in Tai Chi, you have to give 70% effort and the 30% you reserve for a glow that you have. So I thought that was really cool. I thought that was a really cool concept. Yeah. Yeah, man. We've, we've gone uh, over time, but I love this conversation, man. Uh, We we have to keep talking. I'll have you as a repeat. We can do a part two if you want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, For sure, man. For sure. And if you have a podcast or anything, you can invite me on, man. I love these collaborations. Excellent. Yeah, actually, actually, I just, just decided I'm going to do a men's podcast called the powerhouse man. And it's going to be an interview series where I'm interviewing successful men. Um, mm. for my YouTube channel and, you know, I all that kind of stuff. Mm. Right. So I'll definitely Powerful. have you on. We'll link that on and we'll make sure we get you on. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Awesome, brother. Well, man, uh, what's one thing that you can leave people with? If you had to yell it through a megaphone, the universe could hear you. What does the general of the semen retention army have to say? If you want to be a real soldier, retain. Learn <laughs> hey. semen retention and it'll transform your life facts man awesome where can people find you man easiest way is go to nakuladas.com and that way because it links to all the rest of the platforms and i always recommend people starting with my youtube channel again just nakuladas and uh, you'll find me up there uh every wednesday uh myself and uh you know some of the captains inside the semen retention army we go live with sexual alchemy trainings i tell people start off with that because then it's not just concept, but you get to actually learn it, experience it. Oh, these are the movements. This is what we're doing. And then we go from there. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much for your value today. Appreciate it, man. Uh, may the flow be with you. May you never be the same again and stay legendary. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you.